Hi everyone, this is Sarah from Japan and welcome to another read along. I'm sorry I've been absent for about two days. I've had a lot of cleaning and、um, rearranging my、uh, classroom. I've painted,、uh, was busy painting today and I've finished that. And so I haven't had a chance to get on here. So, but anyway,、um, take a look at my classroom. It is much cleaner now. I painted all the shelves and That's the、um, nativity scene up there. I did that for Christmas, and then, like,、um, I'm kind of redoing the world. Look at all the trash I threw out. <laughs> and this is my classroom. I, paint, I painted that poster, I drew it and painted it myself. And so I've been kind of busy. Let me see. This room was super dirty and super dark and ugly, and so. I've been、uh, remodeling for a few days. So that's, what, that's why I haven't been on here. But anyway, I'm trying to get back on track. Now I've finally finished、um, cleaning and everything, so I finally got a chance to sit down. It's、uh, 3, oh, 3 40 in the afternoon, so、um, I'm going to try to get through、um, some of this. But anyway,、um, let's get started. So please open your Bibles up to, book,、uh, to the book of Math,、uh, Mark. Chapter 11, let's, let's go. All right, so the triumphal entry. Now, when they drew near Jerusalem to Bethphage, 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 however you want to say that, and Bethany, at the Mount, Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, and he said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and as soon as you have entered it, you will find a colt tied. On which no one has sat, loose it and bring it. Okay, so this is, was、um, predicted in、um, Isaiah, okay, in the book of Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah、um, prophesied about this. Loose it and bring it, and if anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? say, The Lord has need of it, and immediately he will send it here. Okay, so. so they went their way and found the colt tied by the door outside on the street, and they loosed it. But some of those who stood there said to them, What are you doing loosing the colt? And they spoke to them just as Jesus had commanded, so they let them go. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their clothes on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their clothes on the road, and others cut down leafy branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then those who went before and those who followed cried out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! Good song, too. There's a good song called Hosanna. You should listen to it, it's really nice. All right, anyway, verse 11. And Jesus went into Jerusalem and into the temple. So when he had looked around at all things as the hour was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The fig, the fig tree withered. Now the next day, when they had come out from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing from afar a fig tree, was, a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to it, Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. Okay? So,、um, this was talked about in the book of Matthew as well,、um, where he saw the,、uh, the fig tree and he actually cursed it, I believe. Where does it?、Um, where did they see that?、Um, Matthew. Hmm. Uh, somewhere towards the end. <laughs> But anyway, we talked about it before, and he saw the tree, and he actually, he actually、um, cursed it, and it withered up. Okay? Because the tree represents us as, as Christians, as followers of him, and he says, you know, to bear fruit. You know, a good tree bears good fruit, a bad tree bears bad fruit. They can't bear you know, the opposite, right? And then there's trees that bear no fruit. And this tree had no fruit at all. Good or bad, so he withered it up. It kind of reminds me of、uh, what he had said in the、um, book of Revelations, and I think chapter 3, it's talking about the,、uh, the church of Laodicea. And he says, You are no, neither hot nor corn, cold, you are lukewarm, so I will spit you out of my mouth. I will spew you out of my mouth.、So、it's like there's no fruit. You, know, the, you don't have good fruit, you don't have bad fruit, you don't have any fruit. So, you know, he. I think he hates lukewarmness more than you know, one extreme to the other. But anyway,、um, this is my theory on it. But moving on, Jesus clean, cleanses, cleanses the temple. Verse 15 So they came to Jerusalem. 
Then Jesus went into the temple and began to drive out those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of money of money changers and the seat of, of those who sold doves. So just like that. And he would not allow anyone to carry wares through, through the temple. And then he taught, saying to them, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer of all nations? But you have made it a den of thieves. And the scribes and chief priests heard it and sought how they might destroy him, for they feared him, because all the people were astonished at his teaching. Whenever, when evening had come, he went out of the city. The lesson of the withered fig tree. Okay. So coming back to that. Now in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering to him, Rabbi said to him, remembering, uh, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you curse has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not have doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says shall be done, he will, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. So, like I, I've said many, many times, there's a lot of times that um, we'll pray for something that's like seemingly, to us, it's, it's seeming, seemingly impossible. So, you know, there's this, like a little bit of doubt when we pray, like, oh, well, if you can, you know, if you will. We kind of say it like that because we don't believe completely, 100%, that, you know. And then a lot of times we wonder why, you know, our prayers aren't answered, okay? You have to have faith, okay? As I've said before, it is impossible to please God without faith. All right, you can't, and he couldn't work his power in his own hometown because they, didn't, they were unbelieving, they didn't have faith. So, you know, um, he's, he's shown from the last two books alone, if you, if you watch my videos from before this one, you'll see that how many times has he pressed, you know, the issue of faith. Okay, faith is what it's all about. You've got to have faith in him, okay? All right, forgiveness and, and prayer. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive your you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Okay, so um, if you are bitter, if you are angry with someone, and you do not forgive them, even if you think you're justified, you're not. You're not justified to have unforgiveness in your heart. Nobody is. I mean... Jesus came, he died on a cross, he suffered all that pain and suffering for us so we would be forgiven. How dare, how dare we not forgive another person? You know? Um, if he can forgive those that persecuted him on the cross so that we would be forgiven, even when they were mocking him when he was dying, they were mocking him. You know? If he, if he can forgive them who were, who were killing him and mocking him, then who are we to not forgive? You know, so if you don't forgive completely, then, you know, he will not forgive you. All right? So, um, and sometimes, you know, there's situations where I've been in myself, like I said, uh, um, I had a hard time forgiving my mother. And I would forgive her in my heart. I would pray. And I'd tell the Lord I forgave her, and then she'd do something to, to you know, like, stir up that old wound, that pain again, like ripping off a scab or something, and I would be angry again. You know, she would hurt somebody in the family, and all that pain and anger would just come back, and, you know, I kept struggling with it. I kept struggling with it and struggling with it. Finally, I had to go to her. You can, it's not good enough to just forgive someone in prayer. you got to go to them. Okay, so it says here, um, you know, you got, if you, if, whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him. I think there's another um, verse in the Matthew that says that um, if, if, you know, you have something against your brother, or if your brother has something against you, you leave your offering at the, at the altar and go and, and ask for forgiveness. Or you go make, you know, you make, and there's another one that says that you don't let the sun go down on your anger. Okay, so you have to go to them. All right, you either have to go to them, call them, make contact. And when I uh, went to forgive my mother, I noticed I prayed for the Holy Spirit to guide me, and I noticed the first words out of my mouth were not, Mom, I forgive you. They were, Mom, I'm sorry I hurt you. Please forgive me. You know? So it comes from us first, you know? But anyway, Jesus' authority questioned. All right, verse 27. 
Then they came to Jerusalem, and, and as he was walking in the temple, the chief priests and scribes and the elders came to him, and they said to him, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority to do these things? But Jesus answered and said to them, I will ask you one question, then answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. So he says, okay, you want me to answer, uh, answer your question, then you answer mine first. Okay? So, the baptism, baptism of John, was it from heaven or from men? Answer me. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say from men... They feared the people, for all counted John to have been a prophet indeed. So they answered and said to Jesus, We do not know. And Jesus answered and said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things then. No. Checkmate. <laughs> all right, moving on to chapter 12. The parable of the wicked vine dressers. Okay. Mark chapter 12. Then he began to speak to them in parables. A man planted a vineyard and set a hedge around it, and dug a place for the wine vat and built a, and built a tower. Then he leased it to some to wine dressers and went into a far country. Now at vintage time, he sent a servant to the wine the vine dressers that he might receive some of the fruit from the vineyard and the vine dressers. And they took him and they beat him and sent him away empty-handed. Again, he sent another servant, and at him they threw stones and wounded him in the head and sent away, him away shamefully treated. And another he sent, and again he sent another, and him they killed, and many others beating some and killing some. Therefore, still having one son, his beloved, he also sent to them last, saying, They will respect my son. Okay, but those vine, vine dressers said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. Sorry about that. All right, so this is the heir. Come and let us kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. So they took him and killed him and cast him out of the vineyard. Therefore, what will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the vine dressers and give the vineyard to others. Have you not even read this scripture? The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it was marvelous in our eyes. See, he's talking about Jesus. Yeah. And this, uh, this uh, parable here, the, the stone, this part here, the stone which the builders rejected, this was also, I think, in the book of Isaiah. Okay, it's, pretty, it's prophesied. He's talking about Jesus would come, you know, and he would. He's the building block. He's he's the cornerstone of of everything, and they're going to reject him. But this is to fulfill God's will. Okay, he has to be crucified for us to be forgiven. That's the, that's the plan. Okay, all along. And they sought to lay hands on him, but feared the multitude, for they knew um, he had spoken the parable against them, because they are the ones that are going to reject him, those Pharisees. Okay? So they left him and went away. The Pharisees, is it lawful to pay tax to, taxes to Caesar? Then they sent to him some of the Pharisees and the Herodians to catch him in his words. When they had come, they said to him, Teacher, we know that you are true and care about no one. For you do not regard the person of men, but teach the way of God in truth. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Shall we pay or shall we not pay? Good question. Kind of sounds like uh, like um, this thing going on right now. Um, people talking about not paying their taxes to the government because the government is stealing from them, you know, and, and using our money for things that they shouldn't be. And so a lot of people now are saying, well, maybe we shouldn't be paying our taxes. Maybe just stop paying our taxes then. But, uh, I don't know, it might kind of relate to that. Maybe not. <laughs> but, um, shall we pay or shall we not pay? But he, knowing their hypocrisy, said to them, Why do you test me? Bring me a denarius that I may see it. So they brought it. And he said to them, Whose image and inscription is this? They said to him, Caesar's. And Jesus answered and said to them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And they marveled at him. 
the Sadducees. What about the resurrection? See, the uh, Sadducees don't believe in, in resurrection, okay? So then some Sad Sadducees who say there is no resurrection came to him and they asked him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote to us that if a man's brother dies and leaves his wife behind and leaves no children, his brother should take his wife and raise up offspring for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first took a wife, and dying, he left no offspring. Then the second took her, and he died, nor did he leave any offspring. And the third likewise. So the seven had her and left no offspring. Last of all, the women died. Last of all, the, women, the woman died also. Therefore, in, in the resurrection, when they rise, whose wife shall, will she be? For all seven had her as a wife. I find this interesting, though. Then Jesus then said to them, Are you not therefore mistaken, because you do not know the scripture nor the power of God? For when they, arrive from, for when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. Okay, so we're not going to be given in marriage when we get up there, because we're going to be married to Christ. We're all going to be married to Jesus when we get up there. Right now we're the bride waiting for our, for our bridegroom to come and take us home. But, um, and so we're betrothed. We're not married yet. We're betrothed, okay? But when we get up there, we'll be married to him, all of us. Okay, all of us to go up there. Okay, so we won't be marrying anybody else because Jesus will be our bridegroom, okay? But concerning the dead, that they rise, have you not read in the book of Moses in the burning bush passage how God spoke to him saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? He is not the God of the dead. He is the God of, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. You are therefore greatly mistaken. So that means after we die, if we have been following him and we have given our life to him, then we won't be dead. He's not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living. All right? The scribes, which is the first commandment of all? Then one of the scribes came, having heard him reasoning together. Okay, perceiving that he had answered them well, he, an he well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? Jesus answered him. Listen carefully. Verse 29. All right? The first commandment, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. He has three parts, but he's one. And you shall love, this is important, you maybe want to highlight this, put a circle around like the verse 30 here, you know, highlight it, put a star by it, whatever you need to do. All right, put a heart mark by it, and it says, And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all, with all your strength. This is the first commandment, and the second is like it. Like it is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You shall love your neighbor. That means you should care about them, okay? You should care about people. Not just care about them, but love them. There is no other commandment greater than these. So these are the two most important ones. So the scribe said to him, Well said, teacher, you have spoken the truth. For there is one God, and there is no other but he. And to love him with all the heart, with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself, is more than all the burnt whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. Okay, now when Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to them, you are not far off from the kingdom of God. But no one dared question him. All right, Jesus, how can David call his descendant Lord? So how can, Jesus, how can David call his great, 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 14 generations down grandson Lord? This is how. Okay, because Jesus was from the beginning. That's why. All right. Verse 35. Then Jesus answered and said, while he taught in the temple, how is it that the scribes say that, this, that the Christ is the son of David? For David himself said by the Holy Spirit, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies my, your footstool. Therefore, David calls, David himself calls him Lord. How is he then his son? And the common people heard him gladly, so the common people kind of got it. All right. Beware of the scribes. Then he said to them in his teaching, Beware of the scribes who desire to go around in long robes, love greetings in the marketplaces, the best seats in the synagogues, and the best places at feasts, who devour widows' houses, and they, they take all their tithes and stuff, and for a pretense make long prayers. These will receive, receive greater condemnation. 
because they're hypocrites. It's not from their heart. All right, the widow's two mites, two small coins, okay? Now Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how many people put money, how the people put money into the treasury, and many who were rich put in much. Then one poor widow came and threw in two mites, which make a quadrants. It's a little tiny bit of money, okay? So he called his disciples to himself and said to them, because that's all she had, Assuredly, I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury. For they put in out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, put in all she had, her whole livelihood. Okay, so that concludes um, chapters 11 and 12 of the book of Mark. Thank you for joining me. Um, I pray, as always, that uh, you hear this message and are uh, blessed, and I hope you understood it well. All right, until next time, be blessed in Yeshua's name. Amen. Bye.